Hello everyone, welcome to second part of this note-taking application using ASP.NET MVC file. So today, in this video, we are going to uh, create a model, which means we are going to create an ASP.NET MVC file application, and we are going to build the functionality, which means the model and the controller for this application uh, to be more clear we are going to build a functionality for this application and in the next video we are going to build a view which means in the mvc which is model view controller and view uh, in that video we are going to integrate our webflow ui with our asp.net mvc file finally it comes to the conclusion of an well-developed application so let's get started uh, i'm having a visual studio 2017 uh, and first thing i'm going to create an application you can do that over here using clicking the button for new project or you can also use Control shift yen and here you're going to add your project name here in our case a project name is not everything application though I'm not going to use um, add to source control which means we are, I'm not going to use version control in this application but in further in the next week we are going to build an application with source control so here uh, there is having a lot of templates but I'm going to choose the ASP.NET MVC and change your authentication to individual user accounts thereby it will create our login and sign up uh, functionality with a boilerplate code so that's it I just created my application it will take some time to create according to your uh, system performance and here we are going to create a new database though I'm going to, uh, I'm using SQL Server 2016 so the database name is not everything so just create it and the second step we are going to connect this database with our Visual Studio project not everything project thereby it will create our application and here in the server explorer uh, I'm going to connect a new project and you can get your server name you can go over here and click right click properties and you can copy this this is your actual server name in my case due to some problem I'm not getting my server name uh, so I'm just going to paste that note everything just test your connection test connection succeeded click ok and this will connect it so after that come to the properties data connections uh, right click the connection and then copy the connection string after that we are going to pay replace our local db connection into our separate SQL server connection uh, I just copy and pasted this one this connection string over here inside of the connection string element in the webconfig.xml file and after that I'm going to create a migration migration is a tracking of our model if you don't know about migration I strongly recommend you to uh, check out the description in that description I already teach uh, I already have a video about migrations in entity framework and also if you don't know about ASP.NET MVC and also uh, I strongly recommend you to uh, learn uh, basic concepts of uh, MVC and also if you don't know about entity framework 
uh, I'm having a playlist of Entity Framework Essential Training. There you can learn about Entity Framework. So now I'm going to enable migration using the command enable migrations. So by enabling the migrations, it will create a migration folder over here and also it will create a configuration.cs folder. We can there we can add our custom configurations and uh, it is the code to configure our migration. So it will take some time because it is generating the code. After the execution of the code, I'm going to add the migration. Migration is uh, simple uh, where we can track our models like migration 1, migration 2, migration 3 and thereby we can uh, revert our migrations. Uh, if you wanted to know more about this, you can directly go to my video uh, and you, you, I hope you will understand more than now add migration is the command and the migration name is initial migration with authentication this is our first migration so when we check here in our database we are not having any tables so there is no tables here is the empty system tables and file tables but this is not our custom tables so after adding the migration oh here yeah it's my spelling mistake not migration it's migration and after adding our custom migration add migration we'll have our tables over here and after this command executed I'm going to update our database the database is updated and so now we can check our database after we refresh this table it will create some tables like ASP.NET user roles, user claims, logins, roles, users kind of stuff. It is a pre-built identity, uh, ASP.NET identity uh, concept and it's, it's, it's the only tool that uh, ASP.NET is using for the authentication kind of stuff and it is really good and if you if you can also make your custom authentication but uh, uh, by default ASP.NET Microsoft provides a boilerplate code for us for login and sign up and a lot of other good stuffs it is though with a clean code so everyone recommend that prefer to use that code so after this migration I'm going to create our model in that model we are going to add a class right click on the models folder and add class so it's going to be the node.cs so where it will create a custom code with a class node so I'm going to create a prop which is a short fan to a short hand to create a property and integer I'm going to create an ID here so what it means means uh, what it means it it is saying that it uh, in entity framework due the though entity framework is an ORM in entity framework each and every classes are known as tables which represent the tables so here the ID integer ID is the primary key and primary key of the table so and then I'm going to create another property to store our name for that I'm going to use the data type of um, string and the name which is the name of the note that we are adding and another one is the description of the note string with the description and finally we are going to add our timestamp property not protected
public date time and current date get and set so and after that we need to add our current date so I'm going to create a constructor over here public note and a constructor inside the constructor I'm going to you initialize this uh, property by daytime dot now so that's it and the next thing that after creating our table next thing is we are going to add that I think oh no it's just a property so we cannot have method kind of stuffs so the next things I'm going to add this table into our context so for that I'm going to add this one public uh, I'm going to set this as a virtual and also I'm going to click a DB set inside of the DB set we are having a class name a table of node and the property name of nodes and set actually the database context is DB context is the gateway uh, to interact with our table uh, the, uh, as as of, as of we know that ORM is an object oriented way of interacting with a database instead of using the old school SQL queries so here the DB context is a gateway for our ORM to interact with the database and also the DB set is the container that which collects our uh, tables and uh, translate this into our context code so here I can I am using the application DB context uh, for the entire application you can also use a separate DB context for separate tables it doesn't matter but I prefer this way this is my style of coding so it might uh, might be yours or others will vary so it doesn't matter and the second thing is name is really required so I'm going to add the attribute uh, as required so uh, we need to import some annotation sorry uh, we need to import our namespace for that I'm going to use control plus for the shorthand and you can also use that bulb symbol icon so that's it I just created my table model and here as usual I'm going to update and add migration no table actually this notes table so after adding the migration I'm going to update our database uh, where it will reflect in our actual database in the SQL server so update database so here we can see that after we refresh this table we are having a nodes table so inside of the columns we can see that ID as primary key name as varchar and description as nvarchar and current date is day time so that's it so after this uh, actually we are going to create a controller so that's my style uh, first thing I'm going to create a model and then I'm going to cr uh, I will create a controller and finally I'm going to create a view so I'm going to create an empty controller where in an empty controller I am having a name called notes controller so in controller as we discussed earlier in the past video uh, the functionality of this stuff uh, of this application is CRUD we are going to do five different stuff one is five different views one is index page is used to list all the records 
second is detail page which is used to uh, view uh, details of specific record and third is create which is a grad so C so create a record and the fourth thing is uh, and the fourth thing is update so update edit and update a record and the fifth thing is delete delete a record so as of we know the before doing this we need a object which means we need an instance to interact with our DB context so for that I'm going to create a new instance private application DB application DB context and the context name which is DB application DB context so as usual control dot to import our namespace of um, import our namespace models so the first thing I'm going to pay cut and copy the record over here uh, index the for the the as usual thing that you know we are going to list all our database records so for that I'm going to using DB which is an instance and nodes dot to list method which this method will retrieve all the records uh, in our um, in our in from our nodes table and it will render the data in our view so and the second thing is we are going to use the uh, details so for that I'm going to use public action result which is an details and then end the ID so we are using a specific ID so it is recommended to use some ID parameter pass the ID in a parameter so and the next thing if ID is equal to null means then we are going to throw some bad request uh, HTTP status code so for that we are going to return new HTTP status code result inside of that HTTP status code dot not code result it's code dot bad request so in the semicolon uh, the we need to import the system dot net to access this HTTP bad request and then we are going to retrieve that specific record a specific record based on our ID uh, so we need to retrieve a specific record based on that ID which is passed in our parameter so we are going to add that inside of the note object notes is equal to I'm sorry it's not going to be note it is a, though it is a specific ID it's not going to be a plural or a plural and notes dot fine it is it's not real uh, mandatory stuff on naming the variable uh, I mean naming the um, identifier but it's actually a good practice to make 
the thing really real time so that it will uh, we we can develop our skills and also it is essential to name our variables correctly and also follow some uh, follow some um, patterns uh, so now if our node is equal to null means we are going to throw HTTP not found error so it's not an error it's just an uh, info return view and then we are going to pass the note so here it will render this specific details uh, specific details about this uh, ID uh, specific record according to the ID so we just still can complete the details and the third thing is we are going to do is create and inside of create public public action result of create create return view so actually this is the uh, uh, this is the form to the get method uh, actually this is the form where we are having that form the it will render the form which is used to uh, submit our data and here is the action which is performed actually the form after the form is posted uh, so I'm going to use the attribute of HTTP post for the variation and next thing is we are also going to do the validate anti-forgery token for security purposes to avoid cross-site reference forgery action result which results in creating a created database and the first thing I'm going to do is to bind and include all the records that needs to be stored so the first one is ID so just for my clarification I'm going to check out my names controller name sorry uh, record names so first one is ID and second one is name and third one is description and and I think that's it for now yes uh, actually the current date is automatically added so after that note note no I think it's not in the context note note so that's it open up if model state is valid if all the uh, record and all the constraint that we put here is valid means then it will comes inside the if block db dot nodes dot add and we are going to add the nodes so it will add all the uh, data in our parameter and it will add in our database record 
So this is Orem. Uh, it, it makes our life a lot easier. So the next thing we are going to save our changes just uh, it is pretty equivalent to the commit stuff mm. to follow the uh, acid principle. Redirect to action And inside of that, I'm going to have index method. So that's it. And finally, I'm going to return all the data. Uh, and I'm going to return after the submission. I'm going to um, I'm going to return the view to the index page. And you can redirect and return to any page that you want, but it is uh, it is it is a good practice to uh, move or redirect the page, uh, redirect the functionality to index page after the form submission. So the end next thing we are going to do is to edit. So for that, I'm going to use public action result edit, uh, which is a get uh, to retrieve a specific ID, which can be a nullable. So yes, it is. So in this section, I'm going to totally copy this stuff inside of the details stuff if id is equal to null the same thing is going to happen here where we are going to add our uh, id uh, we are going to retrieve our id and after we uh, retrieved our id we are going to uh, re uh, we are going to pass that in our form each attribute so it will have uh, in this this will make you to render a form page and in that form page we are having uh, a specific details about that id uh, i mean uh, it uh, i mean in the form we are having the editable uh, code uh, no I hope you guys understand when I do that in real time. And the next thing is after the form is posted. So for that I'm going to use the attribute HTTP post and also validate anti-forgery token and public action result. Edit. As usual, I'm going to copy this one. And paste it over here. And, and after that, if model state is valid means is valid then I am going to do the DB dot entry dot uh, entry of the note notes dot state is equal to entity state dot modified modified here I need to import that data dot entity namespace so what's happening here is we are updating these records in the specific ID of the existing record so the next thing is as usual we are going to save changes in our DB so and after that we are going to return redirect to action 
of index page. So finally, we are going to return view of notes. Save that and the update, edit and update stuff is completed. And finally, we are having delete stuff. Public action result delete and ID. As usual, I'm going to paste this. No. Actually, I'm going to copy this. And after the delete stuff is performed, I'm going to, this is actually the HTTP POST kind of stuff. HTTP POST, comma, action name of delete. And also validate anti forgery token. Mm. So, what I plan to do is to uh, when we click this delete action, uh, I mean, that when we click some links or buttons, it will mm, uh, come into this action and it will perform and uh, retrieve the specific ID in the parameter which is passed. And the next thing is it will retrieve all the records from the ID and render that stuff into a new page, into the new view, where it where in that page it will show all the details of the record. And in that record, we are just having a confirmation, delete confirmation. After they confirmed delete, uh, it will... Uh, directly delete the item because it's not a good practice that we uh, it's, an, it's not recommended that if we click the delete link it will directly uh, delete all the record from the database so it's not really recommended some people may uh, accidentally click the delete button then it will uh, gone away so that's not good stuff though although I recommend you to redirect a new page and there we you can have a confirmation if they are confirmed then you can proceed to delete it's not a mistake so for the action delete confirmed int id so here I'm going to come over here and after that the po uh, the note notes is equal to db dot notes dot find that specific ID and the next thing so I'm going to do is to remove db dot notes dot remove specific record in this ID. So after that, db.save changes, db. Dot, uh, sorry, I'm going to return and redirect the action to action in index page. Yes it is. And finally And yes, that's it. Uh, and finally, we are going to do some. So let's get rid of this. So for the final thing that I'm going to do now is, oops, uh, final thing, I'm going to dispose, which means I'm going to clear the database connection unwanted memories by manual by doing that using uh, dispose method. 
wide dispose. This pose just by pool this posing or you can do uh, some short hand just by using this pose or you can use the interface of i disposable and override why this pose boolean this posing if this posing means then I'm going to clear the connection of the DB dot dispose so you can see over here the dispose method is actually called uh, a protected dispose method which is used to uh, dispose the connection the unwanted memory objects after from forming these all actions so that's a good practice for us to disconnect uh, and clear the connection data from our program where it will save a lot of stuffs disposing and save that Oops, sorry, uh, we need to have this in the protected. So because uh, it's 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 uh, it's interfaces, so we have to do that in protected. So that's it, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just created just as a recap, we created an index details create update and finally delete and dispose to all the objects and that's it we created nodes and controller and in the final part of our series we are actually going to we are actually going to delete uh, sorry we are going actually in the final part of our video we are going to actually uh, integrate our webflow UI in our view then you can see the complete functionality of this application and that's it so that's it uh, if you like the video please like share and if you like our videos please subscribe and if you have some feedbacks uh, please comment in our comment section and if you subscribed our video please check out the notification button uh, notification icon or button whatever that you call uh, then 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 only you can get the quick updates of or any uh, stuffs so that's it for now uh, thanks for watching bye bye